Minh Thúy xin kính chào quý vị hôm nay thứ Sáu, 26 tháng 4, 2024. Đến với VATV hôm nay gồm có phỏng vấn đặc biệt và nhạc lá bồ đề. Kính thưa quý vị, công việc của các nhân viên sở ngoại vụ đa phần là theo dõi và báo cáo những phong trào biến cố đáng chú tâm ở Việt Nam. Như Lacey Rice đã nhận thấy ngay, theo dõi và tường trình là những việc vô cùng phức tạp. Những công việc theo dõi đó thường đưa đến những việc phải phân tích và tổng hợp rất nhiều những tin tức khác nhau và thường xuyên trái chiều. Chẳng những thế, đôi khi các cơ quan lại có những bản tin tường trình riêng, không đúng hẳn và đôi khi trực tiếp đối nghịch với những bản tường trình của các cơ quan khác. Chính phủ Mỹ phải làm gì khi nhận được những bản tin tường trình hoàn toàn khác biệt của Sở Ngoại vụ CIA và Bộ Tư lệnh Viện trợ Quân sự Việt Nam. Xin mời quý vị theo dõi sự suy nghĩ và giải thích của ông Lê Sri Rice trong phần 5 phỏng vấn đặc biệt do Phan Lê Dũng, Võ Thành Nhân và Minh Thúy thực hiện. Do you see any conflict between you were mentioning the Hoa Hao and the Khao Dai and other sites? Do you, uh, as you as you observe them, how big is the uh, conflict between these religions or groups? How big is the conflict between them? Do you see any conflict? You mean between the Hoa Hao and the Khao Dai? Yeah, and Khao Dai and other other sites in no. the country. No. <laughs> between them. Between them. Well, if if it was going on, I didn't notice it. In in fact, one of the things that I did notice. Or, or believe I noticed in Vietnam was that uh, the Viet, uh, Vietnamese who belonged to a certain group were not trying to proselytize people in other groups. Mm -hmm. If you were a Catholic, people, okay, he's Catholic. If you were a Buddhist, okay, he's a Buddhist. They were not trying to convert people mm. uh, from one to another. In fact, I'll tell you an amusing story. Mm -hmm. When I was down in the Delta, in Binh Binh province, there was an American uh, pastor. Uh, uh, he was uh, a Protestant, and he w he was a good man. He w he was working among the Cambodians, Cambodian Vietnamese, in Binh Binh province. And I can remember uh, talking to uh, a monk. Uh, at one time in my guise as a reporter. And I said, what do you think about Mr. So-and-so? And the monk said, well, we know him well. He's a very good man. He, he has given us a lot of help. We like him. But there's one strange thing about him. Uh, he knows we're Theravada Buddhists, but he keeps wanting us to become Protestants. They couldn't understand that. It was foreign to them. So you don't, so from, your, from your experience, you did not see any uh, deep division or anything like that between religion, because it was reported, in the, it reported all the time in the magazine that there was a conflict between different sects of different religious sects. Well, there, there, was, there was a lot of competition among, within, say, the Wahao, mm -hmm. among different groups. Mm -hmm within the Wahao. Mm -hmm. It had nothing to do with religion. It had to do with uh, politics and, and, and sometimes military. Uh, the same thing with the Khao Dai. Yeah, and I'm then sure, even sure it was yeah. the same with the Khao Dai. I, I knew the Wahao better because I was in the Mekong Delta, but I'm sure Khao Dai were the same. Mm -hmm. what's, the, what's the overall role? How do you see yourself? Just basic, just reporting these things? Yes. Nothing more? And you don't know how they use and why you're doing what you're doing? Well, you're doing it in order to give the embassy and Washington a fuller picture of what is going on in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that, that was the purpose. Yeah. But at the same time, you also have other group, like say the CIA and then the, the military is also doing the same thing. So you three are doing the same activity, gathering information and trying to give the uh, picture to Washington DC. So how do you, do you share information th between these organizations? Sure. And we do? Sure. Mm -hmm. and, but that's normal. Uh, it's going on now, uh, in wh wherever we are. Mm. Uh, we have the CIA, we have uh, the, the Defense Intelligence Agency, we have all kinds of 
uh, organization or a number of uh, organizations who mm -hmm. are doing similar things. The, the idea is that when it gets to Washington and it's all put together, you have not a confusing picture, but a better picture of what is going on. Doesn't always work that way, of right. course. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that, that's why after 9-11, we, we, we started a, a new overall intelligence organization to try to make sure that it was better coordinated. But that's the idea. Mm -hmm. uh, do you see the, the, any improvement uh, in the coordination between the year you said 69 you were there and then from 69 say to 72? Is there any improvement? Because uh, uh, the reason I ask that question because I talked to a lot of CIA agents and also a lot of uh, people in the military uh, advisor group and they seem to doubt uh, one another's information, for example. Well, they don't, they don't, most of the time they don't mention your source, which is a foreign service. But the military and, say, the media, for example, is giving always the conflicting information. So I don't know what's making out of that. And which source is the ultimate source on, on the, 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 the one that the government choose to see? And how well, do you reconcile that? Well, what that? part of the government? Uh, the the administration, the, yes. The Pentagon would be looking at uh, the defense attaché's office and all of that. State Department would have been looking at the embassy political section, primarily. Mm -hmm. but, but all of them would have gotten the reporting of everybody else. So, and don't forget that uh, Vietnam, there were so many Americans in Vietnam. It was so complicated that if you were an analyst uh, trying to put all this stuff together, it would not have been an easy job. Uh, uh, here's another thing, though. I think that uh, a lot of people reach the conclusion because of the biased reporting out of the embassy, particularly, and, and the military, particularly in the early years, mm -hmm. uh, they uh, use that, which is true, they use that to conclude that Washington was badly informed about the war. Uh, Daniel Ellsberg of uh, Pentagon Papers fame, after the war, wrote an essay in which he said, yes, it's, yes, it's all true, there was all this bad reporting, but he said that the main uh, decisions about the war they were not made on the basis of faulty information. Mm. Washington, the White House had a pretty good idea of what was going on in Vietnam. They knew that the reporting was exaggerated. Uh, they sent people there all the time. They had access to all of the reporting, covert, uh, everything, press, everything. Uh, they, they were not uh, uh, blind to what was happening in Vietnam, and they made their decisions for other reasons. President Johnson clearly made his decisions uh, for domestic reasons. And uh, so, so, I, uh, so I would say that even though there was a lot of misreporting and there must have been some consequence to that, uh, uh, overall, uh, you can't, uh, I would not uh, blame uh, any uh, failure, either on our part or that of the South Vietnamese, on bad reporting. Mm. With, maybe one, with maybe one exception. Uh, and Frank Snip has written about this and talked about it. At the, at the en near the end of the war, there was and, and, and this was a, as a result of our overly optimistic reporting, especially in the, in the military channel. Uh, we had a pretty, poor, a pretty poor grasp of what was uh, going on within the 
Vietnamese military with regard, say, to logistics, mm -hmm. which turned out to be a terribly important subject near the end of the war. Uh, and in fact, even today, you have a debate among uh, people as to whether Vietnam was out of ammunition or not. Pretty, pretty important subject. Mm -hmm. And you have, you have people on both sides of that question saying, uh, yeah, they were out of, they were almost out of ammunition. That's one of the reasons they lost the war. We have other people who say they had plenty of ammunition. Often they didn't know where it was. It wasn't distributed in a, in, in a, in, in a, in a, in a way that they could track it as well as they should have been able to. But there was no shortage of ammunition. Well, I don't know the answer to that. I just know that it's an important. Kính mời quý vị đón xem phần 6 phỏng vấn đặc biệt với ông Lê Sri Rice, nhân viên cao cấp Sở Ngoại vụ, sẽ được phát hình vào tối thứ 6, ngày 3 tháng 5, 2024.